On Canada's Atlantic coast, between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, is the Bay of Fundy. Here, among the highest tides in the world, we find the last remnants of the inner Bay of Fundy Atlantic salmon. It's one of the most endangered species in eastern North America. But Fundy National Park and its partners are trying to bring it back, and they may be close to a breakthrough. In the Bay of Fundy, the salmon is an iconic symbol of a healthy environment. It acts as a bridge between the forest and ocean. After spending their early years living in freshwater streams, salmon travel to the nutrient-rich waters of the ocean to grow into adults. Once mature, they return to their natal rivers to spawn, starting the cycle again and bringing with them nutrients that help river ecosystems thrive. Most Atlantic salmon head to the Labrador Sea to feed, where they spend up to three years before returning to spawn. But the incredible fundy tides carry so many nutrients that salmon here never have to leave the bay to find the food they need and mature in just one year. After practicing this shortened migration for thousands of years, the inner Bay of Fundy salmon have become genetically distinct from other Atlantic salmon. The fact that these fish are special has long been known to people here who call the salmon the king of fish. For centuries, the yearly return of 40,000 salmon to the Bay's rivers was an important part of the local culture and economy. Sadly, today, fewer than 200 salmon return to spawn annually. So why is this once abundant fish now facing imminent extinction? The short answer is that no one knows. Scientists suspect that something is happening in the ocean environment. When the inner Bay of Fundy salmon was listed as endangered in 2001, people here knew they had to take action. Fundy National Park collected some of the last young salmon from park rivers and put them into a hatchery to preserve the unique genetic makeup of the fish. Today, the live gene bank at the Magnaquack Biodiversity Facility is the fish's final defense against extinction and the foundation of the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program. Under the stewardship of the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, fish are grown here from the original genetic stock and released back into the rivers. While the gene bank has kept the inner Bay of Fundy salmon alive, after releasing fish for more than a decade, there's been no marked increase in adults returning to the rivers to spawn. But along the way, researchers discovered something interesting. The more wild exposure the fish had, the better their chances of survival, and fish that hatched in the wild were the most robust. The problem was that a lot of spawning aged adults would be needed to get the population back on track. Here's what's being tried now. Young salmon from the gene bank are being released into rivers and given time to grow in the wild. But instead of letting all the juveniles head out into the ocean, where chances of survival are slim, some fish are captured and transported to the world's first wild salmon marine conservation farm on Grand Manan Island in the Bay of Fundy. Here, at a little place called Dark Harbor, Fundy National Park has partnered with the province of New Brunswick, Atlantic Canada Fish Farmers Association, and Cook Aquaculture who have the know-how to grow large numbers of salmon in sea cages. Getting the fish from the rivers to the farm is the responsibility of the Fort Folly First Nation's highly skilled habitat recovery team. Once at the farm, the salmon benefit from exposure to the ocean and are kept safe until spawning age. In coming years, thousands of adult fish will be moved from the Wild Salmon Marine Conservation Farm back to their spawning grounds in Fundy Rivers. The hope is that they'll produce enough offspring to jumpstart the wild population. The Fundy Salmon Recovery Team can even monitor the fish after their release, thanks to trackers inserted by the University of New Brunswick scientists. The tide may be turning for the inner Bay of Fundy Atlantic salmon.
Early results indicate the survival rate of offspring from these adults is much higher than with past recovery methods. For local communities, the anticipation of the salmon's return is growing. Hundreds of people attend salmon releases and participate in Fundy National Park's Swim with Salmon program. The Fundy Salmon Recovery Program now serves as a model for others working to recover wild salmon populations. Once again, connecting the ocean to the forest and Canadians with nature. To learn more and to get involved, visit pc.gc.ca slash fundy.